your girl, Bree. It's your boy, Dre. Man, it's good to be here. Man, it's good to be back. It really is. It really Ooh. is. Another Sunday. Another Sunday. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, drop the beat. All right. So, <laughs> y'all already know what to do. Make sure you like. Comment. And share. Because. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Man, that was sm- that's the smoothest intro we've had all year. All right, I thought that's of better smooth. ones, but you know. Nah, nah, that was <laughs> intro we've had all year. All right, I thought that's of better smooth. ones, but you know. Nah, nah, that was smooth, I'll let man. you have it this morning, all right. <laughs> anyway, so make sure you text the keyword connect to 478-249-5426 to find out what's happening at the ship. And of course, if you're so tech savvy, you can scan that QR code with Is your it phone. On the this morning? I'm not finna turn back around. I've been All embarrassed right. for two weeks. I'm not looking back again. <laughs> I'm not looking it's back. Okay. You want me to? Okay, it's on the screen. You can okay, so you, no, I don't, I don't believe you. Okay, all I don't right. I believe then. you. They can just scan it. Well, y'all on, know on the what's screen. on the screen. I saw what was on the screen. So use that QR code in case you text that. There you go. There all you go. Right, then. So guess what we have to encourage them to do? What? Intent. I said intent. Not intent. <laughs> Make it your intention to attend. Wednesdays in the Word, right? You know what? I'm going to pray for them, too. And also, our prayer line is available as well. It is. It is, right? It is. So that's a whole nother number, 478-225-2226. Now, why didn't you tell me about the prayer line? Because I'm going to pray for you so you can get the uh, the card right. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Right. That's what I'm going to do. I'll let you have it. All right? I'll let you have it. I'm going to call the prayer line know. for you. They have to know about the Wednesdays in the Word. Right, right. Right, right, right. 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 So what are we learning? Have you been attending? I have been attending. Have okay. you been attending? Absolutely. Have you been right attending? Time. I know you've been attending. I saw you in the blue shirt. Yeah, yeah. you was attending. You, you was, was there. there in the yeah. You was there. We saw you. Right. So of course we are learning, relearning evangelism. Yes, we are. It's the reproductive organ of the church, right? Man, it's great. That's Man, great. That's how you know I was there. That's mm-hmm. how you know we were there. That's how you know. Now, of course, today starts off a brand new sermon series that the man, the myth, the legend himself, Pastor Morgan, will be starting. Yes. Man. Man, now, what, what is it? it? What we believe. You got to know what you know. Okay? You got to know what you know. All Why right? do you believe that? I remember LaShawn Hay said that. She said you got to act like you know. Act like you know. But we're going to act like we know knowing what we know and all that good stuff. Right. Right, right, right? Right. Because today we'll be starting about what we believe about God. There you go. About God. You got to know what you know. You got to know what you believe. Why you believe it. Ain't no point to come to church if you don't know what you believe, baby. Right. Oh. Right. Now, of course, you know, we have an amazing worship experience planned. The Absolutely. baddest male chorus in Middle Georgia is going to lead us in worship. Woo! Yes, The Lord. baddest male chorus, man. <laughs> Man, y'all are the definition of old souls, because, man, y'all take me back to church. I know, that's right. Got to do this. Got to do something with it. Ain't Damn. that right? I yes, need a tam- Anybody got a tambourine? Because, goodness gracious. I know, that's right. Man. <laughs> well, we have that. We have the Course of the Worship. But before we get into any of that, any of this. we got to get our ministry highlights after this. Right after this, you guys. My partner in crime is supposed to be with me, but I think he's all pooped out from the color purple. But be that as it may, okay? I'm here, and I'm here for the ministry highlights, all right? My name is Laura Michelle, if you didn't know, okay? And today is May 22nd, and y'all, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot, okay? All right? But all right, let's get into it, you guys. Our Christian enrichment classes will return to quarterly lessons beginning on June 5th. We will start a new urban Christian-based curriculum entitled You! All right, within this context, we will explore the Bible, learn how to live after you get saved, and several other Christian topics. Registration is underway and ends on May 26th. For more information and to register, visit fbbchome.org slash events. 
Our athletic ministry is hosting a Father's Day All-Star Shooting Challenge on June 18th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. inside of FBBC Gym. Registration for this event is underway and will end on June 4th. Participation is limited to the first 100 teams that register, so visit fbbchome.org slash events to register as soon as possible. And for more information, contact athletics at fbbchome.org. For those of you who enjoy singing praises unto the Lord, I know I do. Anyway, you're invited to join the FBBC Mass Choir. The FBBC Mass Choir will return to full capacity on June 5th, you guys. So to be added to the roster, submit your, oh, I hear some applause, hallelujah. Yes, oh yes, hallelujah, praise God, yes. So to be added to the roster, submit your information to choir at fbbchome.org. That way you'll get the information on rehearsal and ministry dates. And we look forward to seeing you at our full choir capacity on June 5th, okay? And be sure to join us this and every Wednesday at 6.30 uh, p.m. for Wednesdays in the Word. We are currently in a series entitled Relearning Evangelism. Oh, yes. So to be sure uh, you have your paper, your pencils, your Bible, and come on and study God's Word together. All right? Amen. We have a special, special, put me on the camera, special announcement here. For the class of 2022, anyone representing the class of 20, anybody in the, uh, 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 in the building graduating in 2022, let me walk down the aisle. Anybody graduating in 2022, make some noise. Ooh. Okay, I hear, I'm on the wrong side, period. All right. Well, normally we honor the graduating class on Sunday morning. Well, this year, we're going to take it up a notch. On July 9th at 5 p.m., we're having a graduation banquet. Okay. That's right. We're rolling out the red carpet inside BBC Gym. And guess what? We're not just honoring the class of 22. We're also honoring all students that are advancing from one grade to the next. So tomorrow, May 22nd, we need you to visit fbbchome.org to register your child for the graduation banquet. You will have until June 12th to register your child for this banquet. No late submissions will be allowed, all right? We look forward to celebrating our students in style. Let me hurry up, because I see they on the stage already. Yes, we are excited about celebrating our students. Oh, yes. But guess what, y'all? Pentecost Sunday is June 5th, 10 a.m., and we're celebrating it in all white, all white here. I want y'all to come up in here looking like y'all finna go on vacation in Miami, period. Okay? All right. We're asking you to wear all white, whether you'll be joining us in person or online. It always gets lit at the ship on Pentecost Sunday, okay? All right. Let me see. Oh, that's it. That's it. We, that's all we got, y'all. For more information and other events, be sure to visit our website at fbbchome.org. Be sure to follow us on social media so that you can always know what's happening here at the ship. For more information, uh, you can be text the keyword CONNECT to 478-249-5426. That's all I have. Have a great week and enjoy our worship experience, you guys. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are glad that the Lord touched you and woke you up with a finger of love this morning, come on, give him some praise in the house. He is worthy. Hallelujah. A brand new day. Brand new mercies. We are grateful. We are thankful. Not because we've been so good, so kind and so loving, but because he is God and because he has chosen us, we give him honor today. We lift our hands in the sanctuary to praise his holy and righteous name. Come on, give him some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Else who has done as much for me as God has done. Hallelujah. Will you agree this morning that he's done more, more than enough, more than enough. 
He's my everything. If He's your all in all, give Him praise and give Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we bow before you, Lord, in humble submission. We bow, oh God, to give you glory. We thank you for your gracious kindness. We thank you, oh God, for our early rising this morning. We thank you, God, for choosing us, Lord. And then, oh Father, we thank you because we know that we are so unworthy, Lord. But God, you woke us up in, in time. You woke us up because you still have need of us, Lord. Father, we just glorify you right now. Lord, we ask that you will come in the building this morning. Yeah, yeah. Lord, that you will suck with us this morning. That you will breathe on us this morning. That you will encourage us this morning. That you would give us something that we didn't come in here with, Lord. Oh, God, we receive you right now. We thank you for it right now, Lord. And then, oh, God, we know that you are all over the land and country all at one time. And, Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you would look out for those who are sick and shut in this morning. Look out for those who don't know you, God, in the pardon of their sin, that you would draw them closer to you this morning. Father, we ask it in Jesus name we ask you oh father Lord that some are strong some are weak God but father we know that in our weakness we are made strong all that we've gone through this week has made us strong God we ask oh father that we will acknowledge that you are sovereign God that you love us in spite of what we go through that whatever we stand in need of you will provide we can stand on your word because your word will not fail us your word will strengthen us where we weak build us what we're torn down we thank you and then oh father you are sitting one who's gonna bring a word a word that will saturate our souls this morning a word that would lift somebody a word that would help somebody a word hallelujah that will mend broken hearts we thank you God for caring so much about us we thank you for deliverance we thank you for restoration we thank you for embalming us this morning we bless you bless and strengthen everything that come before you Lord oh God that it will help that we will serve you God that it will magnify you God we thank you for what you're getting ready to do and then most of all we thank you for what you've already done God we bless you right now oh God we give you glory and then God when it's all said and done we already know that you prepared a place for us we already know that if we do right live right you'll welcome us in God we thank you now in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray everything 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 in Jesus name amen Good morning, fellas here. And sometimes I get weak That's why I'm calling Calling your name Right now, Lord Well, I'm calling your name Cause I need you Right now, Lord And I'm calling your name, Lord Cause I need you, Lord Right now, Lord Well, sometimes I get tired And sometimes I get weak That's why I'm calling Right now, Lord. Hey, I'm praying this prayer right now, cause I need you, Lord. Right now, 
Feels good in here. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, clap. 
Clap your hands, everybody. could have gave us another round of that. celebrate the baddest male course in middle Georgia. Man, y'all y'all singing today for real. And smooth with it too. You know. God bless you. Come on, be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures unto all generations. If you are thankful to be alive, give him one more praise like you're thankful to be alive. No, no casket, no funeral, no hearse. You woke up today in your right mind with the activities of your limbs. Nobody pushed you in. Nobody carried you in. Come on, glorify our Christ. Glorify our Christ. And we give him all the glory and all the honor that is due his name. Amen. Good morning to you, church. What a joy it is for us to be alive in the land of the dying on our way to the land of the living. And uh, we're so grateful and thankful for God's provision, his, his peace and pardon uh, in our lives. I uh, want to say good morning to all of you that are part of this worship experience uh, in the virtual space, uh, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Apple TV, our church's website, whatever is your medium of choice. We praise God for you being a part of this worship this morning here at the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church. Anyone in the sanctuary who is worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time here at Fellowship, will you stand? Would you be willing to stand? We want to just thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Fellowship, these that are standing around you, would you just make them feel welcome? Make them feel welcome. Speak to them. Tell them good morning. Make them feel welcome. We thank you for choosing this church as your place of worship today. And uh, we're so grateful to God uh, that you are here with us. We pray that this will not be your last time coming 
by the ship on your way to heaven. Amen. Those of you that are online, if this is your first time worshiping with us, would you um, make yourself known? Just give us your name, where you're worshiping from, anywhere in Georgia, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, uh, wherever you're worshiping from. Uh, we want to recognize you and thank you. We have people online that will greet you in the love of Jesus Christ on all of our platforms. Church, I want y'all to know uh, not only, and uh, this, this blew my mind, uh, not only do we have people worshiping with us from other countries, uh, but a couple weeks ago we actually verified this, uh, that someone wanted to join our church from South Africa. Amen. So to my, my our fellowship family that's in South Africa, God bless you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the ship. And we praise God uh, for you as the Holy Spirit has moved on your heart. Uh, to uh, connect with this expression of the body of Christ. We praise God for you. And so our e-crew is now international. <laughs> and we give God all glory for that. Listen, church, a couple things I want to bring to your attention, and then we're going to move forward. Let me hear all the sisters that was here yesterday for the prayer walk. If you're here yesterday, our women of worth uh, were here and they were walking and praying and praying and walking and walking and praying and praying and walking. And uh, they, they were at a blessed time. I want to thank uh, my wife, who's the ministry leader of the women of worth and her team. Amen for their leadership this month. Uh, I told them I wanted May to be Women's Emphasis Month, and they have stepped up to the plate in a tremendous way. And I pray that all of the women who participated, we had over 90 women here yesterday just walking and praying and praying and walking. And I pray that you've been blessed. Yesterday was the culminating um, event for the month of May, correct? And so I pray, ladies, that you were blessed uh, through our women's ministry here at our church and that you will continue to participate uh, in our women's ministry as you uh, get word of things that are going on. We want you to be aware and abreast of what is doing, happening at our church to minister to women. Brothers, the month of June is Men's Emphasis Month. Let me hear the brothers say, yeah. <laughs> All right, brothers, brothers, I believe the first event is June the 10th, I believe it is. Uh, there'll be an event for you that's going to be ministered to you through our men in black, so we want you to be aware of what's happening in and around our church for our men in the month of, Je of June. And then in July, to all of our young people, all of our youth, all of our uh, young people, I believe the ages are from 5 to uh, 56. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but all of our young people, our teenagers, July is going to be focused on ministering to our young people. And so we want uh, you to be uh, aware. We got some exciting things coming from our Lit Nation ministry for the month of July. So it's going to be a great summer uh, here at Fellowship. Uh, church, um, I want you to know that this past Friday, this past Friday, uh, we extended uh, our fellowship acts. You know, that's been our vision goal for this year. Uh, fellowship is affecting community through service. That was, that's what ACT stands for. And uh, we were blessed uh, to provide lunch for the students um, at the Northside Elementary School, which is about a minute and a half from this church blessing there for their field day and this time we didn't just we didn't just you know we didn't feed the teachers we fed the student body like all of them <clears throat> now y'all here's what was so wonderful and special about that and you 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 you, un you don't know how little stuff means so much I cannot tell you the number of children 
who Friday were so excited because they were having Chick-fil-A for the first time in their lives. Now, he fed the students Chick-fil-A lunch and they were just really, really excited. As a matter of fact, uh, one of our members is on staff there and a couple of the children in the school uh, are members of this church. And uh, it's just been a blessing to be a blessing. And something so small meant so much. Amen. Something so small meant so much. And uh, church, I want you to know while we're talking about that, um, many of you, Without me even asking, many of you um, made the choice to make a financial contribution towards uh, our vision for this, this year. Um, I tried to have events that engage our physical participation as a body to kind of start the year off. And many of you said, okay, that's great, but I may not be able to do that, so here's a contribution towards the vision uh, from January 23rd through May the 20th which was this week many of you just out of your own volition those of you that are online those of you that are not even members uh, just generously gave uh, $10,460 towards this And as of today, we have used all but $76 of it. Amen. Now, I want you to know that. I want you to know that because I want you to know uh, that we have used your generous donations for the purpose for which they were received. Uh, between Family Promise, uh, the Community Outreach Service Center, uh, the Teachers and Staff Appreciation Week at uh, Warner Robins Middle School, Quail Run, uh, Pearl Stevens, um, the Nurses Appreciation uh, at the hospital, Rebuilding Together, all five of those. We've done, tried to do something each month uh, for the last five months, and uh, we have invested $10,384 so we've used that seven, we only use, we use all of it except for $76. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you because even though you may not have brought a food, you may not have brought uh, some type of hygiene goods, you invested and uh, we did uh, what we was planning to do with it for the glory of God. Now, y'all, it's only me. So we got some more. <laughs> we, we've got we, we've got some more time left in the year to do some great things uh, in our community, and I want to thank you for trusting the leadership and uh, for making sure that uh, the vision goes as it was supposed to go, as God had planted it in my heart. I want to thank my staff uh, for participating with us to make sure we're executing uh, as we're supposed to do for the glory of God. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Two weeks from today is Pentecost Sunday. Two weeks from today is Pentecost Sunday. It's going to be an all-white worship here at Fellowship. It's the first Sunday in June. And Pentecost, ladies and gentlemen, is the birthday of the church. I said Pentecost is the birthday of the church. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost birthed the church. And so we're going to share with all of the church in the world to celebrate Pentecost. It's an all-white worship, so mark that down uh, in your calendars two weeks from today as we celebrate the outpouring of God's Spirit to ignite and give life uh, to the church. Amen, amen, amen. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm led of God's Spirit today to start a series of study on Sunday morning. 
Y'all don't come on Wednesday, so I'll catch you on Sunday morning. Yeah, I'm going to be sitting in this chair for the next six or seven weeks. And we're going to study as a church family. We're going to study what we believe, our doctrinal tenets of our faith. Uh, I want to ask you to do me one favor. Uh, I want to ask you to, to commit uh, to being faithful to worship. We're going to have church, but we're going to learn something at the same time. Amen. Those of you that are online, I want to ask that you to stay committed to this series. We're going to be in it for about the next seven weeks. And we're going to walk through our basic doctrinal tenets of our faith. Here is my conviction that the Lord shared with me. I want you to bring your Bibles. Um, you won't have time to flip the scriptures through all of these scriptures I'm going to give. So at least bring something to make some notes on so you can go back and uh, look at it uh, one of the things I'm committed to as a pastor is having a biblically literate church because most of us know church more than we know Christianity and some of us know church and don't know Christianity amen and that's why when we get, you know, hurt at church, we have no grounding in the faith. And you cannot defend your faith if you don't understand your faith. If you don't understand what you believe, you can't defend what you believe. And so it is not my job as your pastor to come here and here every week and shout you. It is my job to teach you the Lord's word that you may be equipped to have your own relationship with God and that you may be able to soundly communicate your faith to others. And I want you to be very clear that that is a passion for me as a pastor. Uh, it is not in God's will uh, that we be happy Christians and ignorant Christians at the same time and so I would that you would be committed uh, to, to learning Christianity for the next couple of weeks and uh, let's do it together for the glory of God can we give God praise for how he's going to bless us alright let's go to work what we believe our tenet number one is what we believe about God I am ashamed to admit to you, church, that uh, today, um, come August, I will have been preaching 25 years, and I've been preaching about God, but I've never actually preached on God. Because for most of us, we tailor our messages to somehow inspire our audience. But there are times when the word of the Lord isn't always about you being inspired. It's about you learning more about God. That there are sometimes the word of God is about God and not about you. Not about how you're going to get blessed. Not about how you're going to get a miracle. While you need all of those things, and, and there are many watching who may be in need of those things, um, God never intends for us to get any of that without getting him. So, so, so we want to start at the very basic root of the Christian faith and let me also say um, many of us 
are wrestling with this, and I want to address this. Uh, many of us, are, even among pastors and among churches, um, we're wrestling with the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is, are we, are we really starting over? Yes. Every church in America, in the world, coming off of the intensity of this pandemic has to face the reality that we are all starting over. Our lives are starting over. Our churches are starting over. And we may have to deal with that from the ground level and build back up. We're all starting over, right? And in starting over, sometimes we do need to embrace that and embrace what it, what it means to be who we are and what we believe as a people. What does it really mean to be a Christian? What is that? The sad truth of the matter is I believe in a world and our society that is becoming more and more less Christian. We are losing the essence of what it means to be a Christian to openly and cognitively and intelligently understand what it means to say that I believe in Jesus Christ I am a Christian and based on that here are my convictions and the world um that is becoming increasingly anti-God. The greater fear is that the church is acquiescing to the world instead of having the world to acquiesce to the church. So we all need to revisit this. What is it that I really believe Here's the truth of the matter. All of us, when we first, you know, came to church and said we're a Christian, you didn't come because you believed in God. You came to church because your mom and daddy said so. You didn't know what you believe. And some of them they may or may not have communicated it. All they know is we just know it's right to be in church. And therefore we learned as we went, right? Some stayed, some fell off, some persevered. Uh, but, the most, but, but, the, but the goal is we all at some point had to transition from being a Christian because my mom and daddy said so to being a Christian because this is what I believe about God and I'm sold out to those convictions alright so let's begin from the top let's meet God here's what we believe we believe that God is the only and this is going to be on your screen so if you want to take a picture of it you can we believe that God is the only supreme divine creator of the universe, its elements and inhabitants. We believe that he is the only true wise and living God who is the essence of love. We believe that he is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, sovereign, infinite, infinite, immutable and self-existent with no beginning or end within the one being that is God exists three co-equal and co-eternal persons namely God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit I'll read it again we believe that God is the only supreme divine creator of the universe, its elements and inhabitants. 
We believe that he is the only true wise and living God who is the essence of love. We believe that he is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, sovereign, infinite, immutable, and self-existent with no beginning or end. And within the one being that is God, there exists three co-equal and co-eternal persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So there are four sentences here that we're going to try to give some clarity to. And the key is if we make a claim we can't make the claim if the Bible doesn't make the claim. Whatever we believe, we need to be able to verify it with Scripture. Amen? All right, so I'm going to walk through several passages of Scripture. You might not have time to flip through them or write them down, but at least write them down uh, so that you can go back through them uh, in your spare this week. This week's goal is we're going to meet God. What's well, the first thing we understand about God? Well, we, I have to begin this by saying we have to first understand the Bible. Um, I've said this a thousand times. I'm going to say it again until you get it. The ultimate purpose of the Bible is that the Bible is God's journal of self-disclosure. God decided he wanted to talk and expose and disclose himself and he decided he wanted to do it in a book so that the thoughts and exposure of God would be captured and transcended from generation to generation that's what we call the Bible the purpose of the Bible is not salvation salvation is a means to an end what is the end? The end is that God would reveal himself. So the Bible was God's journal of self-disclosure. If somebody ever really wants to know who you are, let them get hold to your journal. Who you really are <laughs> is in your journal. Does that make sense? God had the same idea. There's a lot to me that they're not going to remember. So let's write it down. Is this making sense? That's what the Bible is. The Bible is God's journal of self-disclosure. How he revealed himself to humanity. And the first thing we learn about him is that he is the creator. Um, he is the only supreme divine creator of the universe its inhabitants its elements all that exists that we know exists God created it uh, Genesis 1 1 says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth the earth was without form and void so the first thing he wants us to know is that he is the source and origin of all existence. So the presupposition of the Bible is that you already believe God exists because there is no passage in the Bible that explains how God exists. The reason why is because God has no start and he has no beginning and he has no end. He is, write this down, God is the uncaused cause of all things caused. I got rewind in my mind. God is the uncaused cause of all things caused. God is the uncaused cause of all things caused. 
When we read Genesis, he creates by speaking, which means there was no pre-existing material for God to use to invent anything. He spoke it into existence. Hebrew term there is ex nihilo, to speak it into existence out of nothing. To bring something into being out of nothing. Before God created, there was nothing for him to use to create other than his voice. Am I making sense to you? So you and I don't create, we invent. There's pre existing material for cars pre-existing material for clothes, pre-existing material for money, pre-existing material for buildings. God had no trees, no martyr, no, no cotton. He created out of nothing, ex nihilo, to speak something into being out of nothing. That's what makes him the creator. Now you and I are creative and we have creativity but what we create has some kind of pre-existing material. Am I making sense to you? God had no pre-existing material from which to make anything. That's the that's, that's first thing we learn about God. He is the creator and that thought is carried over in the New Testament in John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 just write it down it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things the church say all things all things were what made by him and to reinforce it he says and without him was not anything made that was made so again what we see in the Old Testament carries over into the New Testament it doesn't change that whatever we know about God remains consistent through the generations all right, so he's our creator. But he possesses certain qualities. He's the only one with truth, wisdom, and living God who is the essence of love. 1 John 4 and 8 says that God is love. That means that everything God does is motivated by love, even if it's his wrath. Now, don't, 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 don't act like you wrestle with that because as a parent you may have to release your wrath on your children but your, your wrath is always operated come on talk to me parents by love you get in their tail not cause you hate them am I talking to you get in their tail because you love them and you're trying to rescue them from themselves <laughs> isn't that what God has done for you and I there's been times God had to rescue you not from Satan Lord have mercy he's had to rescue you from you am I making sense all right, so everything God does is out of love, even if we don't agree with it or understand it. All right, so as the creator, he, he is the uncaused cause of all things caused. God always is. When we, when we see him talk about himself, even when Jesus talked about himself, he talked about himself in the present tense. He never talked about himself in the past tense or the future. He always is in the present tense because he always exists. 
All right? So let's walk through these. Uh, and these are not the only attributes of God, but these are the significant ones. We understand that he's the creator. He is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, sovereign, infinite, immutable, and self-existent. Here's number one. Uh, he is omnipresent. Let the church say omnipresent. Omni meaning all. Uh, present meaning he's everywhere at the same time and there is no place where he is not. And if there is a place where he is not, that place doesn't exist. Am I making sense to you? God is everywhere at the same time. The church and the club. The job and the house. The school and the hotel. I said he's everywhere at the same time. That means that essentially if you're everywhere at the same time, there's nowhere for God to go. Because <laughs> wherever he is going, he's already there. And if he leaves a place, he is still where he left. Am I making sense to you? So our problem with talking about God is that, we, is that we don't always have the proper language that matches God. So we talk about an infinite God from finite uh, mindset. So we say things like, uh, God, go over there and touch somebody. Or God getting ready to move. <laughs> we don't have no 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 choice cause that's the best we can do because we're trying to use finite language to talk about an infinite God I don't need to send him in the hospital I don't need to send him to go look on my neighbor at the, at the, at the, at the place they at. He's already there. All right? Y'all got that? He's everywhere at the same time. It's omnipresent. All right. Look at this. Psalm 139, verses 7 through 13. Here's what it says. Where shall I go from your spirit? And where shall I flee from your presence? I tried this, it didn't work. If I ascend up into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say surely, look at this, this is what shouted me, y'all. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yes, the darkness does not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you have possessed my reins. You have covered me in my mother's womb. Look what he says. Even before I got here, you was in the place where nobody was but me and you. <laughs> in my mother's womb. There is no place where God is not. And if that place, if there is a place where God is not, that place doesn't exist. Proverbs 15 and 3. Right? Write this stuff down. He says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good that's critical for you to understand that means that every evil act did not escape God's knowledge every evil thing that anybody has ever done 
does not mean that God wasn't there. It did not escape his knowledge. It didn't escape his presence. They didn't do it past his understanding. He was right there the entire time. So your question is, Pastor, why didn't he stop it? It's always interesting to me how we always want to make somebody else accountable for our actions. <laughs> if it's good, we did it. If it's bad, it's God's fault. God has a permissive will. He allows things to happen. Also, he gave you a will. Because we're made what? In his image, in his likeness, God gave you a will and God gave you the ability to choose and you have made some bad choices and decisions and then you want to blame God for your bad choice and your bad decision. Y'all know that's what we do, right? <laughs> that, that's, 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 what, that's what Adam told, Adam said to God. Now listen, every, this some stuff wouldn't happen if, it, if you wouldn't have gave me that woman you gave me. No, I told you not to eat of that tree and you made the choice and now you want to blame me for the choice you made because I didn't stop the consequences when I told you if you eat of that tree, you're going to die. Now you want to look back and blame me because you made a bad choice when I told you up front, don't do it. I was giving you signs to leave that fool alone. But no, you wanted to fix him. Because you undefeated, you got, you got See, this is the side of God y'all don't like. See, God lets certain things happen because he knows you don't learn unless you have consequences. That's his permissive will. But he, he was looking the whole time. All right? God is omnipresent. Let's move on. Let's move on. He is omnipotent. Let the church say omnipotent. He has all power. He has all power. Um, whatever can be done, God can do it. And whatever you can't do, God can do it. He has all power. There's nothing he cannot do. And if there's anything he hasn't done, it's because he chose not to do it. One of the things we must remember as Christians is that God has a will. That's the biggest thing all of us struggle with with God. God has a will. God, in all his power and knowledge, still has choice. And none of us dictate God's choices just because we believe. All right, look at this. He is omnipotent. Psalm 62 and 11. Write it down. Psalm 62 and 11. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Isn't that critical? Power belongs unto God. So when we read the Old Testament, uh, I want you all to understand that when you read the Bible, the Bible is not about anybody in the Bible. The Bible is about God and about how God is revealing himself through people. But the text is never about the people in it. As much as we love David and Joshua and Joseph and all of those people, the Bible is not about any of them. The Bible is about God's revelation of himself 
through their lives. And despite whatever authority you think you have, in this world, all authority is delegated. Because power belongs to God. All right, y'all ready? Here's where, here's where it comes into fruition. Jesus gets up out the grave Sunday morning, Easter morning. Listen to what he says in Matthew 28 and 18. Got to write it down. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All, let church say all. All, all power. God is omnipotent omnipotent he has all power and here's another manifestation of that in Romans 13 and 1 it's going to bless your life let every soul by subject be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power y'all see that there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained Lord have mercy did y'all see this nobody's got power but God and those who got positions are ordained of God because their power is delegated I'm going to mess you up now even if they are a wicked king God has power and purpose even for wickedness in high places why? because the eyes of the Lord <laughs> are in every place beholding the evil and the good don't be blaming me for evil when I told you don't eat of the tree in the first place. And now you are living with the consequences of a bad choice. Am I making sense to you? All right, he, he's got all power. He's everywhere at the same time. Thirdly, y'all, he is omniscient. Let the church say omniscient. Now we're talking about the creator. We're going somewhere with this. The word omniscient means he knows all things so he's everywhere at the same time he has all power and he knows all things Psalm 147 and 5 says great is our Lord and of great power his understanding is infinite without limits beyond us He knows all things. I, I, I believe if you've ever had a personal walk with God, this is where, this is that area where your faith in God is really tested. Because God will permit some things to happen in your life and you sitting there like, God, what in the world are you doing? See, I know you ain't, you ain't had no real walk with God because you ain't never had that conversation with God. Well, you sitting up with God like, hold on, bro. Time out. I thought we was better than this. Like, I talk to you regularly. I go to church. I tithe. I don't get no issues. I, I, I don't get my pastor no issues. I'm not no troublemaker. I be at work on time. I stay there till it's time to get off. I'm not troublesome. I'm not in nobody's business. What are you, sir, doing? I got a little bit of Holy Ghost, and you acting like we don't know each other. Y'all ain't never had that conversation with God, have you? When God allows stuff to happen in your life and you sitting there like, whoa, 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 hold on, bro, hold on, bro. I thought I was your boy, for real. And 
And that's where God's omniscience comes into play because God knows what you don't know. <laughs> Come on, look at this. Look at this. Uh, 1 John 3 and 20. Again, I ain't got, we ain't got time to flip today. I'm just, you just write these scriptures down and go back and let it bless your spirit all week. All right? Look, look, look what John said. 1 John 3 and 20 says, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't handle being God. Because if I knew everything, I know some stuff about people who've done some stuff to me. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all spiritual, but y'all not real. So let me talk to any real people over here. That's why I ain't God. Because you better be real nice to me if I know everything about you. The flip side of that, y'all, is that God knows everything about you and don't hold it against you. Who somebody should have got happy right along there. I said God knows all your stuff. He knows everything that the good church folk don't know and he don't hold it against you. He still calls you, anoints you, wake you up every day, bless you, feed you, allow you to be a blessing and know everything that's wrong with you. That's the kind of God we serve. See, this is this, 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 this where you have to be this is where you have to be happy this week, Mark. You got to be happy. People know your resume, but God know your reality. Your resume is just the good side of you. I can't get no help here. Your, your resume is, is your education and your employment and your experience. But God knows all the other stuff that you didn't put on your resume. Sit down. We can't have church like that. It's just... It's my soul getting happy. See, if you just talk about God long enough, something ought to rise up in your spirit. He knows all things. Cynthia, God can handle being omniscient. And some of us can't handle being partially intelligent. You got three letters behind your name and now you think you are omniscient. No, you just got three letters, Aaron. How you think you are missing? You just got three letters. God knows. Tell somebody God knows all. All things. He's, he's allowed some stuff to happen in your life because he knows what you don't know. He's allowed some stuff to happen now because he sees some stuff coming down the road. He knows all things. All right, he, he's got all power. He's everywhere at the same time. He knows all things. Look at this next one. He's sovereign. Let the church say sovereign. Here's what the word sovereign means. 
and only, only the mature saints, and I'm, I'm, I apologize for, for qualifying that, but mature saints, this is one of the things that makes them mature. Sovereignty does not mean that God has absolute authority. Sovereignty means that God has absolute authority with no accountability. What that means, Elder Whitaker, is that God has authority and he can act on it without having to answer to you. <laughs> he has authority with no accountability. See, I got authority, but I'm accountable to this church. And anybody else in any position of authority is accountable to somebody. God is, has authority with no accountability. That simply means that God can do what he want to do. When he want to do it. How he wants to do it where he wants to do it and what he wants to do to whom he chooses to do it without having to answer to none of us. Job tried this one day Job called himself mad at God, you know. <laughs> yeah, Cynthia Jackson, he called himself mad at God, like, hey, man, if I could find God, I'd have some arguments with God. Job talking smack, man. He's smart. And God just sitting there like, okay, you done? Let me ask you this. Where was you? When I hung the stars in space, where was you? When I tacked the grass on the ground, where was you? When I suspended the planets in the space without having them support under anything, where was you? When I made cows and cats and dogs and alligators, where were you at? Now, Job tried that. Now, some of y'all can't handle what I'm getting ready to say. But if God cussed, God cussed Job out that day. He let Job have it. For four chapters. God went on an interrogation that we have never seen before. Job chapter 38, chapter 39, chapter 40, chapter 41. He was like, okay, God, okay, all right, my bad, my bad. Are y'all getting this? Sovereignty means he can take your loved one and not have to answer to you and can handle you being mad at him. See, I know y'all don't want to say nothing now. Sovereignty means God can allow some stuff to happen that you sitting there like, no, bro. And he like, I can handle you being mad at me. I wish, I, I, I thought I had some real parents in the room. You got attitude. Do it mad or do it glad, I don't care. Do it. You got a little too? I'm going to watch you be mad, but you about to do what I said do. Do it mad or do it glad. I bet you're going to do it. I'll tell you that much. Am I making sense in here? See, a lot of the stuff that we do, we actually, it's okay amongst us, but when it comes to God, it's an issue.
You know, when, when, when God hurts you, you won't leave the church. I can't get no help here. Somebody you love hurts you. Oh, I'm going to hang in now. You won't quit God. I know I'm talking good in here today. He's sovereign. He has absolute authority with no accountability. Look at this. First time we, 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 we saw it just leap out at us in Job 1 and 21. J Job says, look, naked came out, out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return there. The Lord gave <laughs> and the Lord has taken away. See, we got a the Lord gave theology. We don't have a the Lord take away theology. I'm talking good. You ain't hearing me. The Lord got a right to take whatever he gives. Because whatever he gives is on borrow. He gave you your wife? No, you borrowing his, his daughter. He gave you your husband? No, you borrowing one of his sons. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of of the Lord and in all this Job did not charge God foolishly Job chapter 9 verse 12 Job chapter 9 verse 12 I'm trying to do the best I can but look what Job said behold this going this going this going to rub y'all the wrong way you ready see this is the difference between happy saints and mature saints happy saints need God to keep doing something for them for them to stay happy but when you are mature just the discussion of God causes your spirit to leap look at Job 9 and 12 this going to bless your life hey man when I read this I was like woo this is a problem look what Job said he takes away who can hinder him and who will say unto him what are you doing who can check God now Job now, now this is the guy the Lord allowed the storm to happen all his kids died his wife cheated on him with Satan. She gone off into the horizon somewhere with Satan. His friends are looking at him like, hey man, I thought you was really good to God. Like, why is all this stuff happening to you? And Job responds by saying, yeah, I got that problem too, but what am I going to do about it? Who can call God on the carpet? Because he is sovereign. Let the church say sovereign. Next one, he is infinite. It means there's no boundaries to God. And because there are no boundaries to God, there's only so much we will ever know about God. Did y'all hear what I said? No one person will ever know all there is to know about God because he's limitless. All right? Um, let me just give you quickly Isaiah 40 and 20, 28. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, that word alone says we can't know him fully. The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not faint, neither is weary. Look at this. There is no searching of his understanding. Searching means God cannot be discovered. He's not some treasure hidden somewhere that we're going to go on a journey and find. God cannot be discovered. He can only be disclosed. God is not a discovery. He discloses himself. 
and there's so much more to God that we will never know. Okay, let me tell you how practical that is. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. No one of us knows everything about any of us. Just think about that for a second. I've been with my wife 24 years. We've been married 23 years. But that means there were some years before I met her that I don't know about her life fully. She don't know about my life fully. So guess what that means? That she and I, as much as we love each other, will never know everything there is to know about each other's lives. You see, what you think is so deep about God is actually very practical in your life. To say you know somebody their whole life, you know we say that? I've been knowing them their whole life. Truth of the matter is you don't. You've been knowing them a long time. <laughs> to know somebody from birth to death does not mean you know everything there is to know about that individual. God is the same way. We don't know everything there is to know about God. The only thing we know about God is what God has disclosed to us. You will never know everything there is to know about any one person. That's deep, ain't it? The same way with God. God has disclosed enough of himself to get us from earth to glory. God has disclosed enough of himself to get us saved. Even John said there's not enough books written in the earth that will cover all of God. He is infinite. There's no boundaries to God. Oh, look, at, look at Romans 11 verses 33 and 34. We're almost there. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of God? Or who will be his counselor? <laughs> who gonna put God on the couch? And give him some advice on how to better be God. God, you, you depressed? <laughs> Let me give you some depression medicine, God. You need therapy, God? Who's going to give God counsel? He's past our understanding. His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. All right. We're almost there. He's immutable. That word means he does not change. Now God may change his presentation, but he doesn't change his essence. He appeared in scripture as a cloud, then he appeared as fire, then he appeared as a pillar. He may change his presentation based upon the context in which he wants to present himself, but his essence never changes. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. He says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13 and 8. Just, just write them down. You ain't got to get to them. Just write them down. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He does not change. Ladies and gentlemen, as much as society has, is changing and will change, God is not adjusting to how we choose to satisfy ourselves. His word doesn't change, neither does he change. Here's the last one. I've been waiting to get to this. All right, you got all of that? The last line of our statement says that he is self-existent with no beginning and no end. And within the one being that is God, there exist three co-equal and co-eternal persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So he's self-existent. Where do we get that from? All right. Um, the very first time 
that the word Lord showed up in the Bible is Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 through Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 the word Lord does not show up at all it's only God from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 the word God there translates Elohim which is the Hebrew word for the one who creates what is God doing in Genesis 1 creating in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 it's the first time in scripture that the word Lord shows up in the Bible it says this these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens Lord there is translated the word Jehovah the church said Jehovah you take all of the vowels out of Jehovah and you get the word, the Hebrew pronunciation, Yahweh. Let the church say Yahweh. Yahweh was God's proper name to the people of Israel. So Jehovah and Yahweh are the same. One has the vowels, one does not. The word Jehovah or Yahweh means the self-existent one. Did the church say that? The self-existent one. It means he exists in and of himself. He always was, is, and will be. And Yehovah is the verb tense, all three verb tenses of the verb to be. So the way it really translates is that Yehovah is he who was, he who is, and he who will be. I'm trying to educate y'all in here tonight. That's what it means. He who exists, he who was, is, and will be, the self-existent one. So when you see Lord in the Bible in all caps, you automatically know that word means Jehovah. So when we read that text, you know, from the King James Version, it is, out of this new translation, has got some other stuff going on. But Lord God actually translates the self-existent one who is the creator alright did y'all catch that the self-existent one who is the creator so there's no separation of gods that we're talking about y'all following me now he exists in and of himself if you go down through Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 Lord God appears in several of those scriptures and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth. What does that sound like? And the self-existent one who is the creator formed man from the dust of the ground. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden. And the self-existent one who is the creator took man and put him in the garden. And the Lord God instructed the man to dress the garden. And the self-existent one who is the creator. Is this making sense to you? Well, so that you're not confused, it carries over into the New Testament. It's in Philippians 2. Here's what he says. For God has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Is this making sense to you? See, I don't want you shouting and being ignorant at the same time. I want you to know your God. I want you to know why you are so excited about Jesus Christ. Is this making sense? See, you can shout in here and struggle during the week and partially because your faith isn't grounded in something strong. 
You got to be grounded in something. And therefore, you won't be easily swayed. And you can soundly talk about God and your convictions to God. And within the one person that is God, there exists three co-equal and co-eternal persons. 1 John 5 and 7. This is our last scripture. We're done. 1 John 5 and 7. If you're in a hurry, too bad. You need the word. You need to stick around for the word. 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. This is the most definitive scripture about the Trinity that I've read so far. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Look at this last line. And these three are one. See, you can't make a claim if you ain't got the Bible to back it up. I know what you heard. I know what you thought you heard. But we got to be able to make claims and then use the scripture to back it up. Because you and I can be wrong, but God's word is never wrong. Everyone standing. I want you to be able to leave out of this church today having the persuasion that you've got to look closer to God today than you have in a long time. I don't want a God that I don't understand. I don't want a God I can't talk about, don't know how to talk about, scared to talk about. I need to be able to contend for my faith and be able to talk soundly and confidently about the God of my salvation. Why is he so great? Because there's no other God like him. Why is he so superior? Because he is God alone. Because of him, we have a right to the tree of life. Because of his unconditional, unmerited love for us. All of these attributes of God that we have talked through today lift up the glory of God, but they also have benefit for us because they all give us more reason to walk with him and to trust him and to be able to soundly communicate him. Let me pray because the biggest thing I want you to have today is to know that you are sound in your understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you leave out of this place, even those of you that are online, when you get to this place where you can talk about God, you can do it with strength and conviction. Put me in B flat. Father, I pray now that you would bless your people. I pray, Lord, that this week, our real blessing is actually getting closer to you. Our real blessing this week is being able to talk soundly about you to whomever we come in contact with. Our real blessing, Lord, is that you decided that today not only would you get closer to us, but through your word, we'll get closer to you. Thank you, Lord, that I know how to talk about you now. I know how to have joy just talking about you. And I pray, Lord, that you will bless your people and not allow the word of the Lord to fall on stony ground. Touch those in the virtual space. 
Bless them, strengthen them, give them holy boldness just to talk about you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that somebody will give their lives to the Lord right now as we offer Christ to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you just lift your hands? Would you just lift your hands? God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me never, never to leave me, never, never, ever come short of his word. I got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Keep my life. I want to go with him. I want to go with him when he comes back. Come too far. I come too far. Lift your voice here. Come on, church. Let's worship. God is. Just worship him where you are. God is. God is. God is. God is. Yeah. He's my all. One more time. That's our declaration today. God is. God is. God is. God is. Listen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Listen. While the glory of the Lord is here, somebody looking and watching in the sanctuary and in the sacred space of the virtual space wants to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your day, your moment. I got a grounding on God now. I know who God is. I'm able to talk about God. I'm able to connect my spirit with God. How are you able to do that? Number one, you got to be able to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and do it today. How do I do that, Pastor? Number one, you've got to be willing to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Number two, 
you've got to be willing to believe by faith that he died for you that his blood washed your sins away restored you back unto the father and number three you've got to be willing to believe by faith that god raised him from the dead if you're willing to believe those three things in your heart and confess that out of your mouth the bible says you shall be saved upon believing those three things he'll fill you with the holy ghost so you can live for him from the inside out it's your sunday this your day next sunday's not promised to you tomorrow's not promised to you what you really have is right now if that's your decision or your desire i want you to get your smartphone right now and text the keyword join our church to 478-249-5426 that's 478-249-5426. Jesus Christ is here to save you today. There's still room at the cross for you. And I would love for you to be the latest member of the Fellowship Bible Church. I would be honored to serve as your pastor. We are a loving church. And we believe in the love of Jesus Christ to be extended to you. If there's somebody here in the sanctuary and says, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Just get your smartphone. Text that keyword. If you're at your computer, you can go to fbbc.org. Type membership at fbbchome.org and share your conviction. Our staff stands ready to receive you in the love of Jesus Christ. Would you clap your hands for that person that's considering Jesus right now? God is Give him praise, everybody. I said, give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the Lord's church. Church, it's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. Oh, we can do better than that. Come on, it's giving time. Let's celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. This is part of our worship where we, we share and worship the Lord through our giving. You have these six options on screen. If you came in for in-person worship today and you got an envelope, I want you to hold on to that envelope, put your tithes in it, and uh, you can drop it in the receptacle as you leave out of worship today. Uh, those of you that have a smartphone, uh, you can use either of these options to give unto the Lord today. Those of you that are at your computer, you can go online uh, to our church's website, fbbchome.org, and give unto the Lord. Tithing is the first tenth of our income to God. And he says that when we give unto the Lord in obedience and we do it the right way, he'll open windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. We won't have room to receive it. I'm so thankful and grateful to God that God has an open heaven over my life because I'm doing what God told me to do. Is that anybody else's testimony? You're giving the way the Lord told you to give and God is keeping your life and your family for his glory. Amen, amen. Let's pray, church. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, would you touch us now and bless us? Would you keep us, Lord? Would you keep your promise over our lives as we give unto you faithfully yet humbly? and in obedience thank you for the promises that are attached to our obedience and we give you glory for it now in jesus name amen those of you that are online if the holy spirit is leading you to give and you're not a member of our church we want to thank you uh, for following the leadership of the holy spirit and giving and sowing into fertile ground for the advancement of god's kingdom all of you that are members of our church we thank you as well for being faithful in your stewardship to the lord uh, during this time amen clap your hands if you're happy that you got something to give i said clap your hands if you're happy that you got something to give hallelujah hallelujah amen what a mighty god we serve the angels bow before him and heaven and earth adores him i want you to leave out of this place assured and sound in your understanding of god and be able to soundly communicate it with others 
for his glory. Just a quick reminder, church, this coming Wednesday, we are continuing in our study of relearning evangelism. God has been blessing us in a great, great way on Wednesdays. Amen. And so I want you to make it your business to be here this Wednesday for our in-person Bible study right here in the Dome uh, at 630 or online at 630. Uh, God has really been helping us to reacquaint ourselves. And I want it to be our mission as a church that before 2022 ends, I want every single member of our church uh, to share your, your, your witness of Jesus Christ to somebody. Uh, whether they join our church or not, of course we would want them to be a member, but more importantly, we want them to get Christ. And so I want to empower you with the word of the Lord, equip you to evangelize and to reach, reach at least one person for Jesus Christ before this year ends. Amen? I want you to be able to do that. And so I want you to be here on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, what's today, the 22nd? It's the fifth Sunday. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday. So we have the fifth Sunday and then the following Sunday will be the first Sunday in June, which will be our Pentecost Sunday. We're going to be uh, praying for that. I want you to get prepared for that. And let's celebrate uh, God's spirit igniting the church uh, for the work of ministry in the legacy of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Everyone standing. Look this way, I want to pronounce the blessing of the Lord on you. The Lord God bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless your going out and your coming in. And may the favor of God grant you what money cannot buy you. And may this week be a week that you draw closer to God and be able to confidently communicate him to somebody else. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. I'll see you on Wednesday. Everybody have a great week.